Hello all. Today we will be discussing the effect of oxygen on microbial growth and distribution. Just to refresh our memory, we had studied that microorganisms are usually unicellular, poikilothermic, cold blooded and they respond to variations in environment. Their growth is affected by their surroundings and understanding of the environmental factors is crucial to control microbial growth as well as to study their ecological distribution. Where are they found like that? Now most important environmental factors affecting microbial growth are oxygen level, solutes and water activity, pH, temperature and other factors like pressure, radiation etc. Now the effect of oxygen concentrations on the growth and distribution of microorganisms. Depending on the availability of oxygen or a requirement for oxygen, microorganisms are classified into five classes. Aerobes, anaerobes, facultative anaerobes, aerotolerant anaerobes and microaerophiles. Aerobe, it is an organism which absolutely requires the presence of atmospheric oxygen for growth. Example Staphylococcus. Anaerobe, it is an organism that do not require atmospheric oxygen for growth and may be in fact killed by its presence. Example Clostridium. Anaerobes are of two types, strict or obligate anaerobes which do not tolerate oxygen and can be killed by it. Example Bacteroides, Fusobacterium, Clostridium, Methanococcus. Then there are facultative anaerobes which do not require oxygen for growth but may grow better in its presence. Example E. coli. Next group is aerotolerant anaerobes which simply ignore oxygen and grow equally well whether oxygen is present or not. They simply are not bothered by its presence or absence. Example Enterococcus faecalis. Microaerophiles are another group which require, as the name suggests, little lesser oxygen than the normal atmospheric level of oxygen. Normal level is 20% and microaerophiles require oxygen in the range 2 to 10% for their growth. Example Campylobacter. Campylobacter can also be taken as an example of capnophile. Capnophile are carbon dioxide loving microorganisms. So Campylobacter is a capnophile and microaerophile grow in high carbon dioxide concentrations and in the presence of small amount of free oxygen. Is seen in intestine and can cause intestinal disorders. Another example is aggregative bacter species, which is found in the mouth of juveniles causing periodontitis. Thus, we saw five classes of microorganisms based on their requirement of oxygen, and they can be pictorially represented. represented like this. If they are grown in, cult in a culture tube containing broth, where do each classes occupy or grow in the culture tube? Obligate aerobes are usually seen on the topmost layer because they require oxygen for growth. Facultative anaerobes, they can be seen throughout the tube but they grow better on the topmost layer. So more amounts are seen in the topmost layer otherwise they grow uniformly in the culture tube. Obligate anaerobes they are killed by oxygen so they occupy the bottommost layer. Aerotolerant anaerobes they are simply not bothered whether oxygen is present or not so they can they grow uniformly well throughout the culture media in the tube. Microaerophiles they require little lesser amount of oxygen than the atmospheric level so they do not grow on the topmost layer they are seen little lower from the topmost rich richly oxygenated layer.
the subligand anaerobes grow only in the lower areas. Microaerophiles will grow in a thin layer below the richly oxygenated layer. Facultative anaerobes grow more in the top but also is seen throughout the medium. Aerotolerant anaerobes grow throughout the medium. Now different microbial groups are there and they show different relationships to oxygen. In bacteria and protozoa, all five types as we discussed till now are seen. Fungi are normally aerobic. Yeasts are facultative anaerobes. They can grow both in aerobic and anaerobic environments. This ability to grow in both the environments is unique. It provides the organism with considerable flexibility. They can grow in whichever environment they find themselves in. So it also adds to their ecological advantage. They can survive in whatever conditions. Algae are almost always obligate aerobes. These different requirements of the organisms to oxygen is usually related to the type of metabolism it uses to generate ATP. ATP as we know is the energy currency of the cell and usually ATP generation is linked to the electron transport chain where the electrons are transferred from one acceptor to another and the final acceptor can be either oxygen or a non-oxygen molecule. Aerobes use oxygen as the final electron acceptor and they have aerobic respiration for their metabolism. Obligate anaerobes use various organic or inorganic materials as electron acceptors. They have fermentation or anaerobic respiration pathways for energy generation and they do not require oxygen. Facultative anaerobes grow with or without oxygen because they can metabolize energy aerobically or anaerobically. They prefer aerobic respiration because it generates more ATP than the fermentation. That is why we told it will grow more, more better on the topmost layer but it can also grow throughout in the culture tube. Aerotolerant organisms or aerotolerant anaerobes use fermentation or anaerobic respiration pathways for energy generation like the obligate anaerobes. Now we also discussed that obligate anaerobes is killed by oxygen. For aerobes oxygen is a must but for obligate anaerobes they get killed by oxygen. Why is this unique relationship of organisms with, these, with oxygen? Now oxygen though essential for aerobes is actually very toxic. It has two unpaired outer orbital electrons and it readily accepts electrons and gets reduced forming reductive byproducts called reactive oxygen species or ROS. Common examples are superoxide radicals, hydrogen peroxide, hydroxyl radicals. All these are extremely toxic and they are powerful oxidizing agents which can destroy cellular cell and cellular constituents. Flavor proteins and other cell constituents promote this oxygen reduction. This oxygen reduction products like what we discussed superoxide radicals, hydrogen peroxide, hydroxyl radicals are in fact used by our immune cells, neutrophils, macrophages etc. to destroy pathogens which try to invade our body. So a microorganism must be able to protect itself against such oxygen products or it can get killed. Usually these microorganisms possess enzymes that neutralize these toxic oxygen products. Obligate aerobes and facultative anaerobes contain superoxide dismutase and catalase which catalyzes the destruction of superoxide radical and hydrogen peroxide. Peroxidase is another enzyme which can be used to destroy hydrogen peroxide. How these enzymes work? Superoxide dismutase neutralizes superoxide radicals converting them to hydrogen peroxide. 
hydrogen peroxide is acted upon by catalase which converts it to water and oxygen peroxidase can also neutralize hydrogen peroxide in presence of NADH forming water and NAD so aerotolerant microorganisms lack catalase but have superoxide dismutase aerobes have both these enzymes and aerobes lack both these enzymes aerotolerant organisms have superoxide dismutase but lack catalase facultative anaerobes have both these enzymes now aerotolerant lactobacillus plantarum also uses manganese ions instead of superoxide dismutase to destroy superoxide radicals so revisiting the earlier picture five classes of microorganisms with respect to their relation to oxygen and where uh, where they occupy which position they occupy if grown in a broth containing culture tube obligate aerobes occupy the topmost level they contain both these enzymes superoxide dismutase and catalase facultative anaerobes they grow well on the topmost layer but they can be also seen uniformly throughout the medium they also contain both these enzymes superoxide dismutase and catalase aerotolerant anaerobes they ignore oxygen grow well throughout the culture media in the tube they contain superoxide dismutase but usually lack catalase some aerotolerant anaerobes can also use manganese ions to destroy superoxide radicals micro aerophiles they occupy the position little lower to the topmost richly oxygenated layer and they contain both these enzymes superoxide dismutase and catalase usually obligate anaerobes lack both these enzymes thus overall the different relationships with oxygen is due to the kind of metabolism of microorganisms whether the respiration or fermentation and the effect of toxic oxygen derivatives on the cell and inactivation of proteins by these derivatives presence of enzymes that neutralize the toxic oxygen products all these factors influence whether the organism is aerobic or anaerobic effect of toxic oxygen derivatives on cellular constituents we discussed coming to inactivation of proteins enzymes can be inactivated if sensitive groups like sulfhydryls are oxidized nitrogen fixation enzyme nitrogenase is an example which is highly oxygen sensitive and it should be protected from oxygen so conclusion obligate aerobes micro aerophiles anaerobes obligate anaerobes facultative anaerobes aerotolerant anaerobes now in some cases we find that though anaerobic bacteria cannot survive oxygen and will be killed by its presence sometimes strict anaerobes are recovered from seemingly aerobic spaces that the environment may be aerobic but we find strict anaerobes there how is that possible this is possible because they associate themselves with facultative anaerobes which use up available oxygen thus making the growth of strict anaerobes possible for example the strict anaerobic bacteriologist digivalus lives in mouth where it grows in the anaerobic cavities found around teeth the facultative anaerobes use use up oxygen whatever is available in the area thus reducing the oxygen availability allowing anaerobic bacteria to grow and survive